When I worked in the CIA and when I worked in the NSA previously, as a technologist, as a systems administrator, I had broad access, much broader access than other people. And I could read many different things. So I already knew a lot about what was going on relative to the average person. But when I reached the Office of Information Sharing, of which I was the only employee, I was the Office of Information Sharing, now I had basically the same access to go around and read whatever I wanted as the director of the NSA. And so what did I do? I, I wrote some scrapers. Uh, and I, I started to see everything that was out there. Uh, and everything got centralized in Hawaii. And this was so I could share it out and create a little system that showed people this goes here and this goes there. And this might be useful for you in your office and that office. But I got to see what was going on in every office. And there weren't a lot of people in NSA who got to see this. And when I did it, 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 started to, it started to really trouble me. Now, you guys know what happened when we go back uh, to the history. This is, of course, the, the most famous slide for you guys, because it's not about phones. It's about the Internet. This was where the largest Internet service providers in the United States had secretly been going far beyond what the law required of them to cooperate with government and hand over, in many cases, without warrants. The entire Google histories, you know, Facebook histories, uh, whatever's in your iCloud account and so on and so forth, over to the government under a system of secret court orders. This was unfortunately just where it, it, it began. And it wasn't just the Internet. There was a program that, that people uh, saw that actually wasn't related to me. This was follow-up reporting that came, well, I, I think, actually some years later uh, in the United States. Uh, about the phone companies. AT&T is one of our largest, of course, phone networks. And, and what they found was that AT&T had been collecting the phone records of everyone who crossed their system and never getting rid of them for ages, right? If you're younger, uh, if your birth date is after 1987, uh, and either you're an American or you called the United States, right, because anything that crossed their network went there, too. Uh, they have every call that you ever made because that's how far their, their records go back. They were keeping the tower data, which is, of course, uh, the, the ledger of your cell phone screaming, here I am, here I am, here I am, going all the way back to July 2008, right? So they have more than a 10-year history of everyone's movements as they cross their, the path of their cell phone towers. Um, and this is, this is the kind of thing that was just spreading and spreading and spreading everywhere on the internet because we hadn't been encrypting things by default. Uh, we saw the NSA and their partners, the, the, the Five Eyes countries as they're called, that's uh, the United States, uh, the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, the, the Anglophone guys had just been looking across the backbone for anything that was even remotely interesting. And then what were they doing? They were just writing a scraper, right? They were just pulling things off the wire. And so they were getting pictures of your webcams. They were getting uh, everything that you typed into the search box before Google finally went and encrypted it. And then they had to ask Google for it, but Google would still handle it over. All because uh, things were not encrypted as they were in transit. Now, the thing I love about this chart, of course, is if you look at the timeline, I think this is the right one, you see there's a big spike right after June of 2013, which was the month that these revelations of mass surveillance first came forward. And this is where I want to talk about you guys as a cohort, not just as people working on, on Web3 uh, sort of initiatives, uh, but as technologists. You did that, right? That spike is, is you. I didn't do that. You know, I was on the run from the greatest manhunt, you know, that we've, we've had in the United States in, in quite some time. But somebody read the news and somebody went, you know what, we're going to shift our site to HTTPS. You know, what? we're going to retool our browser to prefer these kind of things. We're going to make our application send these things. That's just in Chrome, right? But I can tell you from a lot of conversations that is happening across the Internet. And so what did these agencies do in response? They go, oh, people are uh, collecting things in transit. And of course, this is the problem they've always had throughout history. They go, you know, these people know what they're doing. They use encryption. Uh, so we can't catch them in transit. Well, what can we do instead? And we see that, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're an ally or an enemy. Uh, the British version of the NSA put together a really complex operation to actually hack into Belgium's national telecommunications provider, Belgicom, right? Now, mind you, they had legal means to get all of the information they wanted. They could use what's called a mutual legal assistance treaty to simply 
go right to the Belgian law enforcement uh, agencies and go, we need this, we need that, you know, please provide it to them. And it would take a little time because people would have to actually check it, but then they would get it. Instead, they went, well, why don't we just let ourselves in? Then we don't have to deal with their encryption because we have their keys. Uh, we can reroute their traffic. We can change the uh, traffic flows to be more preferential to us, to route communications of interest past our Do interception points. Why? Slido? Because we said so. Then, as we've gone further and further away from this 2013 moment, as encryption has become more effective, as it's become more pervasive, uh, we've seen malware and hacking attempts really explode and go beyond the government, specifically into private industries. There's this Israeli company called the NSO Group. I'm sure many of you have heard about them. One of the things they really love to do is look for weaknesses in iMessage. iMessage, of course, is enabled by default on every iPhone in the world. We just got some CVEs about iMessage, I think, out of Project Zero at Google uh, just a couple weeks ago. And it's great that these holes are finally being closed, but you need to think about how long they were open, how many others there are, and what's next, right? When iMessage is finally a little bit more secure and it's just too uh, difficult to find a fully remote bug uh, easily, where will they move next, right? Encryption is not the answer to every problem. But encryption is the standard basis for every conversation we need to have. And this is the thing. If we have companies, NSO is valued privately at $1 billion or more right now because they were just sold for that. These guys are selling malware toolkits to governments for millions and millions of dollars. I think the Mexican government bought it for $18 million. I think the Saudis bought it for more than $50 million, five zero, not one five. Um, again, fact check me on these because it's all public now. The, these records are out there. But who were they using it against? They were using it against the head of their opposition domestic. Uh, they were using it against journalists that were reporting on the corruption of the president. Uh, and so this is this is what we start to see. We start to see corporations going, well, why don't instead of making security safer, why don't we make it weaker? And of course, the NSA has always been doing this. They've been discovering vulnerabilities, they've been exploiting vulnerabilities, and then they've not been reporting them. Well, the problem is those things leak too. They can't even keep their weapons safe. And then they hit us. They shut down the National Health Service in the UK. They shut down shipping around the world with Maersk. Uh, and all of these are derived from NSA bugs, right, that should have been reported and patched years ago. Unfortunately, proprietary software, you guys know how that works. But even when this doesn't happen, I want you guys to remember, look, you can make your software more secure. Uh, you can increase the security of the route as you're in transit. But we see things moving increasingly more and more to the physical layer. Uh, this is Baltimore, Maryland, in the United States on the day uh, of a Black Lives Matters protest. This is a minority protest movement uh, against police brutality. And one of the interesting things we saw was an FBI surveillance plane during the entirety of the protest was simply doing orbits again and again and again and again. And the only reason they do that uh, in this kind of way is to form a census of which phones are in the area on the basis of their radio identifiers, right? Again, those globally unique or universally unique identifiers that are baked into hardware. And so I want you guys to constantly be thinking about where can we strip these identities out? Because now it's not on planes, right? Now it's on the cell phone tower next to you. Now it's in the gas station. Now it's at the mall, right, at the gates and at every store. And this is uh, something that's going to continue to continue, uh, or continue to get worse. And like, where is this going? We see in China, uh, where they really don't care about the public narratives because they can use their information control uh, to maintain public support despite the abuses. This is not going to be a theory. This is not going to be fearful conversations from paranoiacs like myself and hopefully yourself. This is going to be everyone. This is going to be your, your neighbors. This is going to be your family. This is going to be people who don't understand politics, who don't understand technology, because they don't have time, right? They have other obligations. They have other things they've dedicated their lives to, and they're just trying to get through the day.